I never thought that I would say this, but today is the first reaction on reaction on reaction on a video in the Kaisenis community. <laughs> because Nathan Buzesh, and I still don't know if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, so comment down below was the correct pronunciation, uploaded a reaction actually even to my video, but the whole video is focused more on the topic of weighted Kaisenis. By the way, if any of you by any chance don't know what this discussion is about, it is about if weighted Kaisenis will make you achieve Kaisenis skills, will help you achieve Kaisenis skills. And there are basically two camps, this channel and Jens channel is basically first camp, saying that it will help you a lot. It will help you build the foundation, the needed strength for Kaisenis skills. And Nathan's channel is basically the other camp, saying that it is it is totally unnecessary. Of course, weighted, you can achieve the same thing, like with the weighted, but only body weight. But still, in Nathan's eyes, it is, it is wrong. You don't have to be overpowered. You don't have to be next Max True, next EM Bicycle with weighted or not. You can start with skills right away. <laughs> so yeah, choose whatever camp sounds good to you. <laughs> but anyways, this is just a discussion. I end this discussion basically just by saying that if something works for you, then keep doing it. <laughs> if weighted works for you, don't just because of Nathan stop doing it and do only skills. If you, yeah, you understand. I've got here a coffee because this video, I guess, will be a hell long one because the original video has a freaking 36 minutes or something around that. <laughs> Uh, so far, I'd say we've established that weird kaisen things won't won't give you automatically any kaisen thing skill you possibly are you are dreaming of whatever. That's pretty clear. By doing pull-ups, you you are not teaching your body how to do the front lever. The second thing we've established: you need specificity. Weighted alone won't give you, won't maximize your potential in that skill. And I almost forgot a third thing: big legs are big no-no when it comes to kaisen thing skills. And <laughs> right after I saw that comment, I've got a message you are not ready you are not ready yo can you give me some advice i want skinny legs <laughs> i told you you have to be really sure you don't want a skill before you uh, start training legs I'm not sure if the guy was just making fun of me, but if not, you are cooked. <laughs> There's nothing you can do other than just lying on the bed a year straight and then maybe you will lose something. <laughs> As I said, Nathan says that you don't need to do any of this, any of this weighted stuff, any of this method of trying to be powerful. Maybe he will totally cook us all. <laughs> Maybe we are cooked. <laughs> Maybe he will show us a study of 100,000 people doing weighted and then still have to be training for front level three years. These same three years they would need to do even without weighted. Maybe, maybe he will show us some life-changing info. I basically put myself into a position of weighted Kaisnik's advocate. <laughs> For today's video, I did a little bit of research, uh, watching three videos. But anyways, that's a good progress in my case. <laughs> this video is called How to Combine Weighted Kaisenics with Skills. I wouldn't personally do that because, you know, skills are very taxing. By the way, Micah, I hope you won't be mad that I will use you and put you on 125 speed. Listen up. To achieve a calisthenic skill, we need different so-called athletic qualities. Let's maybe look at a... Planche. Ah, why everybody talks about planche? Why no front lever? For a planche, what do we need? We need a lot of strength. Huh. And you have it. <laughs> Hold up. Especially in our shoulder flexors to maintain that position. We also need some straight arm strength, a bit of core strength, um, but mostly pure and raw strength in our shoulder flexion. But if we're just strong, that's not sufficient because there are a lot okay. of strong okay. individuals out there who can plant. We get that. So what do we also need? Skill. What do I mean by that? Balance. Okay, balance. If you don't have the balance to enter a planche correctly, then you're going to have a very, very hard time, even if you're strong. If you don't have that balance, you will fall over. Then conditioning. Elbows, shoulders, wrists, they're all in super uncomfortable, very, very stressful position. Yeah, and if sure. you're not conditioned in there, you probably can't hold a planche because it's very, very painful for you as your joints are not conditioned and are not stable enough. So yeah, we, we talked about it in the previous video, I believe. And of course, coordination is a thing here. So if you have balance and conditioning, but you cannot really activate the right muscles at the right time, you have a very, very big problem to maintain that planche position because you need to have the hips posterior tilted, shoulders slightly protracted and depressed, arms extended. At the same time, you need to balance. So there is a lot of coordination 
involved. What can weighted calisthenics, if we're now looking at combining skills and weighted, provide for us? We cannot unlock balance, conditioning and coordination specifically for a planche with weighted calisthenics. But we can definitely work on this part with weighted calisthenics. Yeah, basically in my words, all these three things, guys, tell it to my eyes right now. Watch my eyes and tell it to your phone. Tell me that you can unlock all of these three things without strength. And tell me it is not easier to unlock all of these three with strength. So the strength part of a planche is something we can train with a weighted dip. Why can we train that with a weighted dip? Or for example, handstand push-ups. That's also a good, I'd say, strength builder. Handstand push-up. Mm. That's actually like the strength builder alternative to weighted calisthenics. So we will do handstand push-ups instead of weighted dips, for example, I'd say. The weighted dip has a similar movement pattern. We're training that shoulder flexion movement. So that part can be covered with that weighted calisthenics element. And that now gives us a big, big, big improvement for programming because we now don't need to put a lot of emphasis into that strength part with specific planche volume. That means everything we need to do to unlock the planche is focus on the skill part. And that has now a very, very big advantage because the specific planche volume we need in our program and the exercise selection that we need for our planche can be focused only on that. Now, this is basically the case of Ian, Ian's Barsigos, Ian Barsigos grammar case. <laughs> you know, he had the strength covered, started doing planche. Three uh, three months later, he got the full planche. But then we cannot call it planche. After three months, good result. Leave this the neck mindset. I know I taught you this ba very bad habit, but <laughs> <laughs> I would add to this. For example, when it comes to balance, handstand. Uh, handstand is pretty easy move. You still can take advantage of having strength to learn faster the balance because with uh, strength everything goes easier. Nathan would disagree. For example, if I will take this guy, I know he's currently trying to learn one arm handstand on straight bar on. High High bar. Okay, you could do this variation on the floor if you will find a low bar. Did any of you guys try to do straight arm handstand? Burns just on one arm in that position, man. That's a hardcore. Strength when it comes to one arm handstand is still useful a lot because you have bigger range of motion where you can balance. You know, if you don't have strength and you are relying on your wrist basically and you cannot bend your arm, for example, you cannot go to one arm handstand flag to balance it like here. Everything goes easier with strength. No! 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 All right, so that's possibly everything I wanted to say for the intro. This video will destroy Geistnik's beliefs. All right. <sighs> okay, here we got the typical Nathan's intro, I guess. What's up, guys? Hope you're doing well today. Um, first of all, I apologize for the light uh, and I apologize for the sound because I completely forgot my microphone in the gym. It's no longer your microphone. <laughs> that microphone will be gone. <laughs> By the way, Nathan, little quick tip, you could at least put on this video like compressor and hard limiter or something to level up the audio because I guess that you will be screaming in this one and in the previous one you were. This video is going to be very important and I hope you're going to hear what I have to say. It's going to be pretty long and maybe you read the title. It's not going to be a drama video or whatever, but it is a pretty important video to me. So take some popcorn, get comfortable and I ran out maybe of uh, listen to what I have to say. There will be multiple uh, chapters of this video. The introduction, there is street lifting, the YouTube reaction reaction, comments of uh, videos and the conclusion. Conclusion, don't do weighted guys things. <laughs> you can go now. <laughs> I basically wrote a script, okay? So I don't forget too much topics, even though there is so many things I would like to speak about and that will be for other videos. I understand this. I also, and I do videos basically, and I edit them after that. There's so much more things I would add to that, but like, it's a reaction. Uh, like for example, how much people Overcomplexify their training. That's true, that's true. Simplicity over the top. Think that if they are very smart, they will be so strong and stuff while uh, they forget about training specifically and intensely. They are too much into uh, science stuff and they're not enough in uh, feeling and um, human stuff, right? Even if science says that this works better, if something feels good to you. Yeah, yeah, that's true also, as I said at the beginning. I do think that you should do it, right? 
there is a part of human in sport, right, that cannot be really uh, described by science. I think at least. Okay, let's not get too carried away. Let's and by the way, it should be fun. In my eyes, from working out, from trying to be healthy, well, a lot of people look ice snakes just because of the skill and they smoke, for example, they drink alcohol, well, okay, energy drinks. By the way, how's that dust called, man? <laughs> the dust you pour into water. I, I totally forgot it. Sorry, guys, pre work. <laughs> You should not be a scientist and just bending my arm this way work more and or this way or you know, just just enjoy it. You have anyways 50 years or so <laughs> to learn any of your skills that you want. We all saw those athletes planching front levering in their 50s, 60s. You have plenty of time. Man. Let's start chill. Okay. <sighs> so before I start, I have <laughs> something else to say. I encourage you to count the number of time I say the word specific and specifically. I saw a comment uh, saying that he said it like 28 times or 30 times or something like that. <laughs> because I think I'm going to say these words maybe 10,000 times. And uh, yeah, I'm curious times. on how many times uh, <laughs> I'm going to say. So let me put back the church in the center of the village. Huh? My name is Nathan Bo Zesh. <laughs> I got it right. Google Translator. My G. Oh yeah. Not bo shesh, bo zesh. Bo zesh. Okay. B o s e c h. Okay. I am 22. <coughs> I've been practicing calisthenics since six, seven years. More specifically, statics. Here's you can find clips of me practicing statics. <laughs> that guy has <laughs> zero reaction. No reaction. Even men are starting to have zero reaction, same like women. <laughs> um. This is me practicing gymnastics rings. Crazy, crazy stuff. And finally, this is me benching 120 kg or 125. You'll correct me. Normally, it's 120 kg for one rep. Mm, I had 100, 100 kgs. 100 kgs or 120? I'm a lot taller, so that doesn't count. With 58 kg body weight, so two times my body weight. Okay, so I would need to bench like 200. Without ever training for bench specifically. The proof is that I'm recording all my trainings. They are all available on my YouTube channel and you never see me doing benches or weighted dips. All of that does not mean at all that I know what I'm talking about. It means that I'm pretty strong. I'm not the strongest. I'm not the weakest. I'm good at what I'm doing, or at least I'm trying. But it does not mean that I know what I'm talking about. What means that I know what I'm talking about is that during these six, seven years of training, I've only progressed. Zero moments of plateau, zero moments of no progression. I stopped calisthenics for four months, maybe three years ago because of personal reasons. But it was not because I was too uh, tired of uh, not progressing. It was another reason. <laughs> he was tired of progressing. <laughs> Man, this is so easy. <laughs> In all of my current trainings, I am still progressing. I'm learning still. I don't know everything about calisthenics, especially not statics and especially not the rest with lifting and stuff. That's why I would never give an advice about it because I don't know anything about it. All I know is statics. I don't know everything about statics. That's the thing. I will never ever have the pretension to say I know everything. I won't scream by the way. I do not know everything and that's why I'm progressing. It's because I'm open to whatever, whatever comes. I'm not closed and thinking that, yeah, that's how it works. I know everything. I'm so smart. I would like to start with two sentences that could explain a lot about the current situ situation in calisthenics. I'm not a philosopher, okay? I'm not a smart guy, but I like to read some time. And uh, I wrote these two sentences and I thought they would fit well the, the moment. It's impossible for a man to learn what he thinks he already know. I think it's uh, very perfect. It's if you think you know everything, you will not progress and you will never learn anything. The second phrase is from Albert Camus. He said to misname things is to add to the misfortune of the world. I'm trying to have a good pronunciation, okay? If you misname something, you will never be able to talk about it correctly, okay? That's why I'm going to give a definition of static. Static for me is a specific, relative, endurance, strength sport. What does it mean? I'm thinking about a little bit like cut it through because the video has 34 minutes, but I don't want to be accused of putting something out of context. It means that 
you are working with your body weight and only your body weight, right? When you're doing competition, you're not having a weighted vest or weighting ankle. Well, we should we should start doing comp. Sorry for pausing, but that's a good idea. Let's do calisthenics competitions, freestyle with weight vest. There should be weight classes then because 10 kg weight vest for 80 kg guys, nothing. That's my idea. By the way, I want 10% of your uh, income. <laughs> you can train weighted uh, calisthenics. My weighted calisthenics is uh, weighted skills. That's going to help you actually pro to progress. Doing weighted skills is going to help you to progress for sure if you're high level and you're struggling uh, to uh, yeah, add it. intensity to your training. It is going to help you. Anyway, let's go back to the definition. It means that you are working with your body weight and only your body weight in order to move your body in space in very specific positions, often related with balance that require very specific body adaptation, like wrist flexibility, like shoulder opening, protraction, retraction, and other things. Okay, depending on what's the skill you want to work. Okay, but uh, what's the point of telling us? Like, <laughs> we, are, we are here for the weighted calisthenics. <laughs> All of that, as long as possible, the minimum in competition is 2 times 45 seconds, while keeping the same form from the beginning to the end of the performance. For me, this is static. The key of static is to be open to changement, as I said already, and it's based on three big rules that if you follow, you will progress. Specificity, intensity, and consistency. To me, at least to me, it's my way of thinking calisthenics. That's what I teach to my students, and that's why I do for my own progression, okay? What will make you progress is if you train as often as possible, as intense as possible, and the most specific way possible. With that say, I think we can start with the first subject, Street lifting. I've seen some people being shocked that I'm eating during the video. No, not me. I was shocked more about what you are eating, like scrambled eggs with a banana. Maybe that's the secret why he can't do full punch. It's prison, you know, I, I can't eat in my home. Uh, anyway. Well, you can, but we are more used to seeing people, you know, everything has to be super perfect. Same as I do, like I try to speak as perfect as possible. I don't have anything to eat right now, but if I feel like eating a banana, I will eat a banana and you have nothing to say about it. If Go eat a banana not happy come get me in my home i live in the <laughs> i live in the 30 heart limiter please next time okay not so long ago i had a call with jan barzigo oh Ian Barsigl was really pissed off under the previous video or at least it seemed like he posted there a comment and that's actually right now the first time in all of my channel history that i'm saying his name i've never mention his name before you can check the previous videos yeah you didn't mention it but we we all know that weird guy snakes means ian Barsigl. basically that's the biggest name when it comes to this stuff working out or who is bigger not once i said his name i said maybe you know what i'm talking about or who i'm talking about but never said his name everyone in the comment understood directly what i was talking about so maybe there is an issue i don't know Jan is a very kind guy, he's very nice. We went on a 20 minute call over in Instagram. At, at first I did not want it, because for me it's going to be a loss of time, you don't have anything to teach me. But then I realized that I had the opportunity to speak with one of the biggest influencers of calisthenics and expose him my uh, problems, right? What, what I think is wrong in what he is doing. So I was like, yeah, let's do it because I think it can be beneficial for everyone. Okay. So we talked about a lot of topics that I'm going to come back to later. The most important thing I will remember about this call is that he said word for word, I am right. <laughs> I, Nathan, I am right to say what I say. Now the question is, is he lying? <laughs> if you train statics, you will learn statics. Well, yeah, but we already established that years ago, months ago, let's say, man, that's not what the discussion is about. Faster than if you train weighted basics. In order wait, to wait, learn wait, 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 wait. You will learn statics faster than if you train weighted basics. In order huh? to learn statics. If you don't believe me, wait a second. Well, first of all, he said it. Okay, this is some uh, life changing information. Video. Ah, there's the comment, huh? And I hope we will be able to hear. People will always watch me, I'll always share different things to you. And this doesn't mean that your things are not good, you just need to tell them, bro, that's one way of doing it, it's good. But to get skills faster, if Jan agreed that this way is better, if you actually do skills, simple. You know, you have my confirmation, so you can tell them. That's the way I suggest them to do 
uh, to get to skills because you'll gain some muscles, you'll gain some strength, and you'll have to skip through a lot of progressions. Before I will let it play, I remember Coronation having a podcast with Ian Barsigur. He talked about, you know, when someone trains skill, for example, front lever, how big carryover the front lever will have, for example, to other skills. Basically, what I want to say that Ian Barsigur said, this way of training, let's say, one specific skill, you will learn only that skill. But if you have a really strong base, front lever, back lever, muscle up, maybe half a stop, but half a st again, half a stop specific training, you, you have to put some hours into it. But as I said, there's the question, if I will train only front lever from this point and I will get it three seconds of full front lever, for example, how big carryover that skill will I have in other skills, you know? A lot of progressions, which is probably, it's, it's, you know, it's not that enjoyable. For most people, it's not enjoyable to do progressions, it's more enjoyable to do actions. So watch, use this voice note. Every time they measure me, use this voice note, and you have the pass. So I have the pass, you see? <laughs> so he said that you will skip through the progression, and it is completely false. <laughs> Completely false. Huh? You never skip through the progression. You will have to learn the correct progression at one point. He said that I'm, I was right. So to me, there is absolutely no drama. The main issue I had with Yan is that he have an extremely large audience and he don't seem to understand that everything he's saying have a real weight on what his followers think and will do in the future. Yeah, that's a big dilemma. You know, YouTuber has a responsibility for his audience. You know, when Ian, for example, would say, do 10 times 40 kgs pull up, that will help you. That will help you with the front level. And people would translate it into that will automatically give you front level. That's their problem. <laughs> that's not his. During the call, I advised him to be more moderated in what he was telling his followers and use words like, according to me or to my experience, this is the best way to get to X, Y, Z results and not the best 10 out of 10 tips you never heard before because I have knowledge that the other guys don't have because you see what I mean? Uh, you gotta use good YouTube titles. It could be misleading and it is misleading to a lot of young people. Find your own way. You know, Nathan don't, don't know you, I don't know you, Ian don't know you. If you will not buy yourself his personal coaching and you will tell him about yourself. So you gotta try something and if it will work, Continue. Or for example, when he's saying that coaches often don't tell the truth. The truth about how to fix your training or how to progress better because they have a chance to lose you, huh? I hope I'm not putting words in his mouth, but normally I have screenshots that prove that I am not putting words in any one mouth, right? I do not think that it is a good move to do such a thing, especially when you have such a large community and also when coaching is one of the main Revenue source for most calisthenics athletes. Calisthenics RPM. We can forget about having eleven dollars per thousand views, like crypto channels, finances, general. Anyway, I don't have anything against him. His videos are clearly not for me. I'm not the target audience, and it's fine. It's okay. But I hope that he knows and he, that he understood my point during the call that he have a very big community and that everything he's saying is very, very, very important. He cannot allow himself to say incredible stuff, right? Or share yeah, false yeah. information. It cannot do that. Especially that his community is mainly kids that are looking to learn calisthenics the best way possible and they are very easily influenced by whatever he says. Next chapter will be YouTube react. Oh Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, oh, chill out, chill out. Oh, I'm guessing that the first argument will be that uh, whatever I'm talking about when I didn't learn full front level. For me, for me, this attempt was a good one. I was happy. <laughs> Still, as I said, I'm not professional. I'm not teaching. I'm not trying to advise people how to get from one arm front level to one arm front level with 10 cages on your ankles. I'm just saying that if you have this front level, or this planche, there's apparently problem in strength because you are you are shortening the lever. So basically I'm doing a reaction of some guy that did a reaction of one of my videos. So yeah. sadly it's not really a reaction because you know this is another video. I thought that he will do reaction onto his first video, onto my video, where I'm reacting to his video. So there will be all over the webcams and it will be so funny, but man, you messed it up. Huh? YouTuber Zdenek Latal. <laughs> He's French. Yeah, he's French. He's the first guy who pronounced it kind of correctly. The last name, you know, it's a bit longer. Latal. I hope I'm not pronouncing it wrong. Good job. He did a video reacting uh, to one of my videos. It's weird that he put it 
an image of Jan Barzigo. But as the YouTube thing, you gotta put someone famous onto the thumbnail because Weighted Kaisenix, as I said for me, when you say Weighted Kaisenix, Ian Basio. Ian Basio made a really good job in terms of business of like, you know, <laughs> comment down if you have it the same way. The same way. Fitness FAQs also does videos about calisthenics, weighted calisthenics, but not that often. Mention Jan Barzigo once in the video, and the video is about my video, so. Yeah, sorry, sorry. That's that's just a YouTube thing. So. Why would you put Jan Barzigo face? I guess it's making more views. Can understand that, nobody. Try it also next next time if, if there will be. Uh, next time, do a proper reaction. Put. This video, my video, <laughs> and put a webcam just... <laughs> Let's do quadruple reaction. He uh, will judge you for that. The thing is that he was clearly on Jan's side, and I noted two issues. Yeah, on Jan's side, but a few months ago I was against the weighted thing, you know? I was on the side that you should build strength and muscular body, which you can also achieve with body weight, as we all saw channel that's a good money with all those guys and i believe that those guys maybe from time to time do also wait it but their main focus is just body weight you know training in the new york or where they are i'm going to read a little right now because it's things that he said issue number one you can you can sorry explain things even if you never did them uh, I thought that he's reading what I said. Uh, yeah, that's what I that's what I expected. Yeah. And I do agree that you can explain uh, most of the basic of calisthenics if you never practiced. ChatGPT is doing it very well. However, I do uh -huh. think also that in order to understand fully emotion, as complex as planche or sat or uh, Maltese or stuff like that, and explain it correctly, you need, and I insist on you need, to have done it at one point in your life. I expected that, man. <laughs> By the way, I didn't understand the chat GPT. I haven't really used chat GPT on like script or, I, I don't have scripts about before. And even before when I did those more uh, complicated, those previous videos, basically, I basically write my own scripts. Yeah, maybe it looked like like chat GPT write them or, but whatever. I mentioned it a minute ago, two minutes ago. What my advice is, bad front lever, you lack in strength. It's not technique, man. If you have your ass touching the ground in the front lever, that's not technique. That's you lacking in strength and skipping progressions. Being somewhere in the training where you shouldn't be. Especially with the non-existent scientific documentation about this sport. There is stuff as trajectory, positioning, technical details that can only be understood if done correctly at least once. Example, height in planche. How do you understand height in planche? How do you explain height in planche if you never have practiced it before? Well, I'm not explaining that, man. How do you explain a trajectory of presses, trajectory of push-up if you never felt it before? How do you explain a leg implication, a toe trajectory, a heel trajectory? If you never experienced it before, a line, I think it's very tricky and especially with so little documentation about the sport. I'm not spitting on any coaches. I respect you. If you have knowledge, it's very cool. If you worked with very cool athletes and you asked them stuff and documented yourself and evolved in this sport, but did not have the chance of practicing it, but you still have knowledge, respect it completely. Someone that only achieved weighted pull-ups and ultra bad form straddle planche will not be able to fully explain how to have a correct progression in very specific skills. I'm, I'm tripping or I don't know why he talked about with the pull-ups and straddle planche, but I never trained straddle planche specifically and not even like where it dips. I thought that he will at least use like my front lever, but apparently he missed that video. Correct progression in very specific skills. Uh, you know skills. what, don't, have, don't even It is my it. opinion. <laughs> Issue number two, you can't use what worked for you and oh, expect yeah. it to work for other people. So I had this told so many times. Unfortunately, I do not commit the mistake of thinking that everyone is like me, okay? I am well aware of my genetics. I noticed that he replied to one of his comments on this video that he's 55 kgs. I don't know his height. 170, 165, something. One of another, his viewers commented that he is 180, so 10 centimeters uh, shorter than me, and he has 60 kgs. How you can be 180 and 60 kgs, man? What the hell? You have to be a skeleton. I know they are helping me to my progress. However, let's not forget that I am doing coaching since a little more than four years. Therefore, I had the time to experiment, analyze, 
what type of training made my students progress the best. And it turned out, strangely, that the less specific the training was, the less progress the student was making. Of course, not, because he's not training the plan specifically. <laughs> I have only my coaching experience, because I have been talking with athletes such as Ilyas, Livan, Dailong, Kevin, and many other more. And it turned out that they all get the same answers. The more specific the student is working, no matter his height, weight, or uh, level, right? The more specific he's working, the best he's skill are going to progress and that's about that interesting interesting i thought that he will tell us that all of them were short so that that would no you know by telling someone that you are short so you have the advantage we are not really hating on you saying your work is worthless let's say you shorter guys in my opinion again i took nathan's advice i think in my opinion the shorter guys in calisthenics especially in statics are those who will push the boundaries two meters tall guy won't come up with one one arm full planche on thumb, for example. But on the other hand, taller and heavier guys are here to push boundaries in, for example, weightlifting. I do think that uh, specificity is one of the key of this sport, unfortunately. I'm really sad that I have to emphasize so much on such a logical thing, right? For me, on the other hand, logical thing is muscle is muscle. The thing is you have to teach those muscles to do the moves. Larry Wheels, I know a lot of you people comment that that's just one guy. Uh, I taught you well. <laughs> so let's forget about Larry Wheels. Max True, muscle ups, pull ups, sweated pull ups, sweated dips. Vadim Olejnik, you know, that OG Kalistanx athlete, that after many years of training, of doing weight dead, pull ups, basically freestyle, he also started doing planche, full planche training. I'm not sure right now at what level in his planche training he is, Okay. I think I've okay, but drink also drink a water drink a water in moderated enough I, I've took enough little pinch of salt in my videos saying like yeah I think that maybe yeah it could be useful but and then yeah, is it the best no, no 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 okay it can be used in specific programs it can be used in specific programs done very specifically like dips you keep the hollow protraction for uh, pull-ups you do it narrow uh, neutral uh, grip and you try to retract and pull with your lats as much as you can. Have I said it in the in one of my previous videos? If you do Australian pull-ups and try to implement the bodybuilding technique of like when you are lifting dumbbell and you are really trying to turn off your arm and lift it with your back, the next workout you will do try Australian pull-ups and try to really like of course you will pull somehow hard with your arms but really try to turn them off do the movement only with your back man I was crying of course I'm on a terrible level so for you maybe it will be more useful to do this technique in pull-ups going to help you for sure okay it's going to help you for sure but is it better uh, I don't know I don't, I don't have the proper knowledge to talk about how to do one arm front level pull up, how to do explosive one arm front level, explosive one arm front level pull up, what the hell. I'd say that my videos ain't more on beginners who ended up in the same trash like I had. Did. Started way too early with skills and then plateaued. The next topic. That was everything. The guy says, you are saying that Jan is giving random numbers like 40 kg dips for 10 kg? But you suggest 15 dips and 15 pull-ups. Where do you get that from? I have to admit that those numbers, 15 pull-ups, 15 dips, 15... Oh, that's, that's like a general number, you know. I get that comment, uh, but the question I would more aim towards the weighted numbers. Of course, Ian could say that that's also a general number. 15 pull-ups are 15 pull-ups. For everybody, 15 pull-ups is, is differently hard. Do 40 kgs dip. 190 centimeters tall guy. For him, it will be somehow hard. But for one 50 centimeters tall guy, 40 kgs, that's pulling his entire body weight almost. I'm giving this number because I think that, first of all, I did not say you need to do that or that. I said more or less, right? It's if you... More or less, 20 push-ups, 20 push-ups. If you think that you need more, do more. If you think that you need less, do less. People are basically asking me, but what about Larry Wills? Uh, I've never seen him do a lean planche or a thing like that and he's having a very good progression on uh, calisthenics and I do agree but they're saying that uh, thinking that it would break everything that I said before right that specificity is key so <clears throat> I know exactly what do you tell us what are you talking about he's doing bent arm full planche 
full punch push ups, not even lock out after years of training, after roids, after everything. If he won't give up on his calisthenic journey, I'd say there's a lot more to see. Don't get me wrong, Larry Wills' calisthenics progression is incredible okay it's crazy and i'm the first dude then when i see a video of larry doing a planche or doing a muscle up or trying stuff to say wow i love you you're the best uh, i'm a fan okay i'm a fan of larry wills okay. i love him i'm following him since a very long time i love him so much okay please larry notice me send me a message i want to become your friend man okay maybe more than friend <laughs> however larry did do calisthenics before his gym journey, he said that in one of his post podcasts. I'll try to find the, the moment he said that. Uh, but he was doing uh, pull-ups and uh, dips and uh, more specific stuff, like uh, maybe flag and so I'll try to find uh, the podcast. Oh, well, that was only like trying in that. Doesn't he mean that video from Magnus Midbo when he was trying to do different skills? But well, maybe, maybe not, maybe not. Moment. Okay, if I don't manage to, I'm sorry. But I heard it. I'm listening to all of the video of Larry Wills. Do not doubt uh, me. I'm a fan, but also, and mainly, he has uh, insane genetics for strength gain, okay? We've seen that on uh, all his movement, like the powerlifting movement and stuff. He has a nervous system that is allowing him to gain strength so fast and become so strong, okay? That is completely incredible. He has done insane shoulder and chest movements since years, like benches and uh, strongman stuff and poor lifting stuff using shoulder motion and stuff, lifting and stuff, like doing like that with the shoulder, which is kind of the same motion, like it, at least it's more specific than uh, dips, right? He's done all of that for a very, very long time. And also, of course, he is using PEDs. And I respect that, it's cool. I don't care, you do whatever. It, I, me, I respect full because I'm too scared to use PEDs, but maybe one day I will, maybe, maybe one day I will. And uh, I'm a bit too scared for that, but who knows? Another video, another reaction. Is Nathan Bozesh already using steroids? <laughs> I respect that a lot. However, you cannot compare your potential progression as a beginner in calisthenics as the progression that Larry Wills have. We are comparing his progression, for example, to Ian's progression. Like, those are the two similar, same cases. Larry Wills, years of training, boom. Ian Barsiga, years of training, boom. Max Chu, years of training, boom. <laughs> We are not comparing Larry Wheel's progression in planche to someone who's training only like a half a year. It is... If I'm, if I'm understanding correctly. Not... N not possible. Okay, Larry Wheel... <laughs> Larry Wheel, man, come on. He's not only strong, he has world records, a beast in deadlift, bench and any upper body lifts and he's not natural, of course, we everybody know that. The average natural Kaisenks athlete won't progress like Larry. Larry has trained for 10 years, 10 plus years, trust me, if you practice planche for 10 years, you will have a way better planche than Larry. Obviously, because you are spending 10 years of trying to do something. So the point is just, you progress faster if you are specific, it could work with weighted movements, but it will not be faster. Don't compare yourself to a guy like that, okay? As much as you can't compare uh, yourself as a guy like Livan or compare yourself as a guy as uh, Ilyes or me or Dailong or Onizuka or Mani or stuff like that. You can't compare. You will have your own progression, okay? Let's go with the conclusion. Let's finish this. <laughs> and he's totally tired. <laughs> totally exhausted. Like <laughs> To conclude, my theory is that tall people won't progress as fast as shorter people. There is reason for that. Tall people are more heavy in general. They are heavier. They are taller, so their leverage is more difficult. The goal in calisthenics in general is to lift your legs parallel to the ground. Cut your legs. If you have very long legs, it's going to cut them. Be very difficult to lift them. <laughs> very difficult, but is it impossible? Hmm, I don't know. They will get frustrated. Very good political answer. And so they will be more tempted to listen guys like Jan Barzigal that will ask them to change their approach and do more weighted calisthenics and weighted basics in general. They will see progress due to no leverages, as I said, easier trajectory, no isometries, and uh, it's, e it's easier to lift heavy weight when you're tall and heavy than when you're uh, small and light, right? Yeah, sure. In general. Sure. Okay? So they will think that since uh, they are seeing better results in this movement, if they continue, it will impact their skills. The truth is that by doing that, they changed sport. It is not the same sport. And they will still have to learn 
everything that they thought they would skip. And that's exactly what I don't think. Don't tell me that if you will put 10 years into basically becoming a new Matthew Zlat, you will still have to put three years of front level training into being able to even hold it for three seconds. No, I, I don't think that. I don't think that. And I'm sorry to tell you that. Yes, there is a difference between an ultra crappy bad form planche retracted with no line, with no height, with no grip, with no nothing that you will achieve by doing dips. After this, uh, Larry won't be your friend ever. And other stuff that are not specific to planche, for Rip. example, then a planche that have height, a good grip, a proper um, trajectory, impresses, good positioning, and good protraction. I'm sorry to tell you that. I'm not talking to Jan directly, but if he was listening, it would be great. You can't skip the boring part. You cannot skip the boring part. No matter how smart and jacked you look, you cannot skip the boring part. You'll have to do it at one point. I'm not saying that you'll have to stay on them for 10 years, depending on your uh, progression, but you'll have to experiment on tuck planche. You'll have to experiment on stall planche. You'll have to build volume. It is important. It is mandatory. It is like that. That's the sport. So I checked uh, with some next day, next day friends. I asked them. Shit is overlighted. To make me a list of 180 centimeter athletes. So we had uh, Vincent Cali. Uh, very impressive strength and multis and everything. Right here, I can use your same mentality. That's only one guy. Or was it even your mentality? Or someone said it. Some, well, I said it. <laughs> we have um, Kalis Rama, very impressive, 180 meter, okay, two, insane two athletes. skills and combos and strength and incredible. Nani Nana Elias Page at his prime, he had a wonderful butterfly, he had Victorian cross on the rings, he had insane <laughs> skills, okay? We have Inyas that have a wonderful one-arm planche uh, and of course a wonderful Maltese and a lot of combos and other guys but like they are maybe less uh, relevant maybe they're they're a bit smaller like all of these guys are 180 meter I'm going to have a lot of enemies on that which is pretty sad because it's pretty it's like I'm saying the the sun is shining and the sky is blue sometimes sometimes it's gray also or like the the water is uh, is wetting you right but uh, some people do not agree with these uh, affirmations and I will be completely open to debate with you guys unless you write uh, books. Please don't insult my mother, please um, don't threaten me, uh, would be cool. Most importantly, do not send messages to Jan Barzigo or do not send messages to Zetnek. <laughs> I don't think there is enough calisthenics athletes at high level that are speaking about this sport and if we do not speak it's going to die and disappear and be uh, misinformed and people are going to get lost and and he's going to die was he talking about like dying calisthenics dying well calisthenics you know the peak of calisthenics 2019 before the covid basically and now a lot of people said that calisthenics in india is going crazy but another guy told me that the exact opposite so i don't really know what the situation in the world with calisthenics but competitive part of calisthenics won't be that famous for example like bodybuilding in general that's maybe a bad comparison but when you understand for tennis for example i don't know soccer the soccer is gigantic man guys thanks competitions and just overall all the rules everything you have to understand in order to watch them and enjoy them well you can watch them even if you don't know anything but then you are just watching someone doing random stuff with his legs in front of him or <laughs> back. Uh, no sponsors nothing via for this i don't know if that even exists still coordination that's probably the biggest one guys thanks is a popular thing but the Chris Heria version of calisthenics, you know, how to get six-pack abs. That's what people are interested in. That's what they need. This is extreme. Front level is extreme. In eyes of normal mortal guy. Maybe share this video to friends that are doing street lifting. Maybe they will recognize themselves in what I said. Nathan's worst dream right now is getting a dream about street lifting. <laughs> Take care of you yeah. and see you soon. Ciao. Okay. Now Nathan is, is truly pissed off when someone says that weightlifting works and like... <laughs>
for example here i will admit i have used ian's program i did weighted dips as he instructed and after i got 20 kgs dips for eight reps uh, he said 40 kgs i did two workouts of muscle up training with bands and i was able to do an explosive muscle up two weeks later i got seven muscle ups in a row his program is very good so to build some basic strength <laughs> which is of course going to help have that basic muscle strength to then go into skills with i now only train skills and no way at all so he's now doing specific training yeah why would you wait to have such a big volume of weighted in order to do static skills that though that i will um <sighs> that uh what i don't understand it is not the same thing there is almost no chance <laughs> comment down your opinions on this topic and if you like this video you can also check out the almost the newest video on larry wheels training with el campeon i recommend you so much this video because i i was dying from 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 how much i was laughing at it that guy is a form freak so go check it out i will see you there you will not regret that <laughs> bye